Um, I'm going to kind of bring this down maybe to a personal level. Um, uh, I'm a capitalist, um, a developer, um, chartered accountant. Um, you know, for the majority of my, my life, I certainly have not practiced um, environmental design or, or development. And when I look back at why I didn't, it was clearly the, as a result of my education. You know, in university, we didn't talk about the environment. When we did, it was from the perspective that if you're good to the environment, it's a cost of business. So, of course, you know, when I left school, I came from the perspective, do the minimal amount possible to avoid prosecution. And <laughs> about eight years ago, I stopped developing. And, and, and the reason I stopped developing wasn't because I wasn't making money. It was more com from the perspective of I just couldn't look at myself in the mirror anymore. Um, I couldn't look at my kids in the mirror anymore. Um, I just, you know, I was fighting with groups like the Sierra Club. And I, I just didn't feel like there was any value in my life. And so I got involved in this project, which ended up being a Canada's first league gold project. And, you know, it was the first green building I ever got involved in. And I must admit, when I first got involved, I came from the perspective of really trying to get some free press public relations. So it wasn't really a holistic motive at the time. Um, but then I, I read a book called Natural Capitalism. And to me, that kind of woke me up a bit because it talked about the value of our natural capital and how we as human beings are not separate from nature. You know, we're part of nature. It talks about the concepts that, uh, you know, waste is food. In nature, there's no waste. It's only humans that create waste. And it talked about how we need to look to the environment for solutions and how we run our businesses. So I entered this journey um, with that newfound knowledge. Uh, obviously developed a building that got a lot of environmental claim, uh, built it on budget, started to really prove out the economics of ecological design. Then I started to discover, you know, what we were doing has profound impacts on society. You know, like if you can design buildings that have uh, saved 99% of the waste, that impacts landfill sites. When you can design projects like Dockside that treat its own sewage and reuses treated water to flush toilets and that, that's going to have an impact on regional infrastructure. Uh, if you design communities that address uh, compact communities that have alternative transportation strategies, you're going to reduce road infrastructure. Started looking at, you know, schools that were built with daylighting and natural ventilation. Kids got higher marks. You know, that in the healthcare uh, sector, school, uh, hospitals that were built better, patients healed faster. Healthier buildings, people were more productive. So you, I started to see the changes that were happening uh, that you could ha make happen in society that would save a lot of money. And then something else started really funny started happening to me, and it's really been, I would say, over the last eight months, is I started dabbling in this concept of the triple bottom line. Really not coming from the perspective of how much money I could make so I can invest in ecological or social principles, but really coming from the perspective of how do you go about designing things that embrace all three of those principles? And ever since I've taken that on, I've discovered a funny thing happens when you do that. The economics get better anyways. But what's really happening is um, the values are changing. You know, it, it, it always strikes me odd that when we go home and we look our children in the eyes, we want our children to obviously get good grades, you know, be good citizens. We want them to have a kind heart. We want them to be respective of the environment. And yet we as businessmen, yet we as politicians, we go into our everyday lives and we forgot about our values. And so we started to really take this approach of embracing values and how we develop our projects. Because as a company, I was seeing some of our other projects were struggling, yet Dockside was starting to emerge as this, some amazing things were starting to happen um, at Dockside. And, one of the things I thought the reason was is that people were buying into the values. Like our contractor, for, for instance, you know, who I've known for years and years, the guy's values have changed. You know, when I talked about First Nations uh, training, like uh, to give you a story, um, in the middle of the zoning, uh, someone asked me to engage the First Nations people, and I immediately slipped into my old traditional thinking, saying, geez, I don't want to talk to them. I mean, we took this land away from them a long time ago. Why would I bring that into the equation right in the middle of a rezoning process. And then at night, someone sent me some photos of when they were kicked off the land and, you know, the children were in the canoes. And, and it really shook me up. And I said, this is crazy, Joe. You've got to talk to them. So, you know, I sat down with the chief and, 
And like any white guy would do, I started saying, well, I'm going to get you a job training program. I'm going to do some historical signage on site. And I, in the middle of that discussion, I just stopped and I looked at the chief and I said, this is bullshit. I mean, I don't know what the hell you need. I'm a white guy. You know, the reality is we took this land away from you. How about we work together to heal it? And how about we work on healing our cultures? And this created this whole new opening for this dialogue that's now resulted in, for instance, that we're taking First Nations people through a mentoring program. We're going to get them on site working. We're going to get them trained in grade 10 English and math. My contractor is bought into this and that he wants to put this forward regionally. So when I see that, how my contractor, my subtrades or values are changing, and then I start to see the impact on our project, it's amazing. Like one of the things I was scared about in this project was could we do lead platinum? Could we do street sewage? Could we do biomass? Could I do this and meet our budgets? You know, could I get labor? I mean, like in this town now, nobody is having, everyone's having trouble getting construction labor. Everybody's over budget. Look at Dockside, you know, our first phase is 70% constructed. We have not touched our contingency budget. In 20 years in the development business, I've never seen that happen. We've had no problems with labor supply. And I think it all comes down to the triple bottom line because people's values are changing. They're excited about the project. And it, Dockside came about because, you know, a city made a stand. Denise is here. I mean, you know, I know Denise. And, you know, Denise has those values. And she pushed to make sure when that land got sold that it was valued differently, not just strictly from the economic bottom line, but from, you know, the social and the, and the environmental principles. So I think that's... That's where we're starting to dabble in now, because I'm just finding that it's, it's kind of weird when you wake up every morning and some days you hate yourself because you know you've done something wrong, and then you start questioning yourself all the time. You know, the other day I was down and shopping because I needed a new pair of cords, and it, it was interesting. I was reading this book called The Soul of Money, and in there it says, you know, do you really need that new pair of cords? You know, and then it said, okay, if you need those cords, you know, why don't you ask questions of where those cords come? So I immediately went down and bought Panagonia, you know, because he's an amazing company. He does organic wools. He's got the right value system. And, and if we all started doing that, like we don't tender anymore in our job site. I'm handpicking people that are actually have the right values, and that's translating into better economics. And we, where we've struggled as a company is when we're not picking those um, that have those consistent values. And we're not sharing with them because we don't believe that if we share our values with them, they'll understand those values. They, they think it's too touchy-feely. But, you know, make no mistake about it, I'm a capitalist. You know, if anything, I'm probably a little right of center. But the problem is we have just forgotten who we are as humans. And I think it's time that we just, every day when we go to work, we remember our children and what we stand for and the issues around climate change, I'm absolutely convinced we can, we can beat this issue. And I hate it when I take my kids down the inconvenient truth and they come out and totally depressed. You know, and I looked at them and said, don't, take, don't, don't be depressed about this. This is a huge opportunity. Man has the ability to do this. We've had cult, you know, industrial revolutions. We can do a cultural revolution here. And I'm absolutely convinced we can beat this issue.